Welcome back to Horizon 180. I'm Paul Chatterjian, and this entire week, uh, our collective community, our, our world, uh, all of us have been focused on the disaster and tragedy in Haiti. And uh, in studio with us today is Dr. Alina Dorian, who's the assistant director of the UCLA Center for Public Health and Disasters. Uh, and we bring her in today because she obviously studies this for a living, knows this, and is here to explain some things that we both need to know about Haiti and about this area of her specialty. Alina, welcome. Thank you. Uh, we know you as an ANC activist. I mean, day in, day out, you've been a specialist, you've been a doctor, a PhD, but you've also gone out of your way to help the Armenian people as you've done in Gharapag and Armenia. Before we talk about that, I want to know what is happening now. We get glimpses of these stories from various media uh, of aid not reaching people living without shelter, without medicine, the promise of help, but we don't really have a clear sense of the disaster. Well, first of all, um, thanks for having me. Uh, let's talk about Haiti itself, because while this type of uh, disaster, the magnitude of this type of earthquake has occurred before, and even higher magnitudes we've had before, Haiti has started in the worst place, meaning it was even more underdeveloped than you could have imagined. And to have this kind of a disaster hit Haiti, it, it just throws everything out of proportion. It becomes overwhelmed. Um, one thing I always want to like emphasize is that the word disaster itself, the definition, is really a relational definition. Meaning, if something happened here in Los Angeles, for example, if you had a seven car pileup on the 405, that really wouldn't be considered a disaster for LA County. We, it's a mass casualty incident. We'd have a lot, a lot of trouble but we'd be able to deal with it. A seven-car pile, uh, seven pileup in Gharabagh, for example, would be a disaster. And the idea is that a disaster overwhelms the population and overwhelms the society. And when this earthquake hit, as we've seen from the images, not only has it overwhelmed Haiti, it's overwhelmed the world. And basically because we've lost all infrastructure in being able to respond and to deal with whatever it is in Haiti. The other thing is that in Haiti, a lot of the UN agencies, the non-governmental organizations, which I'll refer to as NGOs, like MSF, Doctors Without Borders, IMC, International Medical Corps, the Red Cross, all national societies of Red Cross, the International Federation, as well as the Red Cross Society, all of them are basically became victims, unfortunately, as well. So when you saw, they said, I think 30% of the staff in the UN was actually a victim themselves. The rebels, yeah. yeah. And so therefore, we couldn't respond right away because we were victims. And some of the things that we do when we talk about preparedness, um, we, when, even here in LA County, we say, you know, how many doctors do we have? And somehow we don't ever assume that a doctor will become a victim. You know, so it, it's become so relational in Haiti. So now having said all of that, 7.0 earthquake hits, no building codes we saw. I mean, buildings completely crumbled, pancaked to rubble, and, and we can't get in. It's, a, it's an island nation, and everybody was starting from zero. Now, there's been a lot of work that's been done. It's hard to see it from the coverage, because uh, one of the biggest problems is we've lost communication. Right. Infrastructurally, there's no way for groups to communicate. I mean, satellite phones have been set up. Some, some you know... Um, telephone connections are starting to come back because people are working towards it, but it's so hard to communicate. So it's difficult to get the bigger picture. A group or an agency working in one place doesn't necessarily know what's happening three, four provinces or even three, four roads down, okay? And they're so busy in providing the assistance with minimal uh, supplies. They can't get their supplies in yet. So that has caused a, a disjointed effort in a lot of ways. We see this in every disaster. It's just that it's much more overwhelming in this type of a disaster. Having said that, three, four days ago, finally, coordination meetings were starting to sprout up. But realize, a coordination means meeting means physically somebody needs to be there from your agency, wherever it is. So you need to have a car, you need to have the time, and you need to have fuel to actually get to those coordination meetings. And then finally put all this into place. Now having said that again, we're working on water, sanitation, food. I mean, there, there's nothing, there's no infrastructure. You know, mental health issues. So there's a lot that needs to be done. And it's the entire country of Haiti, pretty much, that we're working with, not just a localized city. 
Armenians are helping out. Uh, you've heard on Horizon about the Armenian Relief Society and how it's collecting funds. Right. And you're encouraged to go to the website arswestusa.org and contribute or send checks to their Glen Oaks address. You can look that up in the phone book. Armenia is also helping out with uh, with rescue teams. Yes, you've told me. Yes, they sent a search and rescue team over the government did, which I'm very proud of them for doing. They have a very good team. Actually, after the earthquake, you know, slowly, especially after, you know, independence, they've been building up their own response. Uh, and they've sent a team to Haiti to help. So what would you do? You're a mom, you have three sons. What have you done to prepare for something that happens? And I'm an Armenian mom, an which Armenian means they mom. eat a lot, <laughs> my kids. Um, one of the first things is obviously pantry. I mean, you need to make sure that you have enough food. And that means for you to be able to stock stuff that will not go bad or to rotate it. Or I actually spent extra money and went to and got specific kinds of food that are 25-year that are shelf life. So I put in a capital investment. I bought some food. I don't know, you know how great it is. I made a few of them just to try it. They have like beef stroganoff. I mean, they have everything that you can think about. But I, I really put into that and I purchased the food. The other thing I do is water. I mean, there, you have to think about it. Okay, you have, how much water can you keep? How many gallons do you think per person you're going to need? Obviously, drinking water is the most important, but you're going to want to wash your hands. You're going to want to go to the restroom. You're going to want to wash your bodies. So you have to think about how much water you would need. You can even purchase like these 55-gallon drums if it's something that you can do. I know it sort of sounds like, oh, almost like too much. But it's like having health insurance because you do it once, hoki tankista, you know, chest methods, you don't think about it. You just do it once and you're ready to go. And like you said earlier, you've studied disasters, possible disasters in California, and some areas might not get water for six straight oh, yes. months. I mean, it's a I mean, definite. It, this isn't that, this is not that it's, oh, it's a story. It's going to happen. It's just a yeah. matter of when it's going to happen. Okay, it's okay. not a matter of if at this point in time. So it's something that, you know, you need to be prepared for. And if you want, you know, it would be good to have some sort of either cooking stove or butane or because you know at nights it's you're not going to have electricity it's going to it might be cold if it's in the winter so you have to think about a few of those things flashlight obviously is something to have a first aid kit when you're thinking about programming or thinking about anything that you need to do when it, especially when it comes to disasters think sort of those russian nesting dolls so you have to make sure that you can address every level so you think okay individual what do i need family what do i need as a community what do we need here you know as my la community as my school what do i need and then as a government what is it that we need to do and as a government i mean what we do at the center we've been funded through the cdc to we are called an academic center for public health preparedness and basically we prepare all of the local public health departments to be ready for disasters. And again, this is all hazards, meaning we prepare for natural disasters as well as terrorism and human-induced disasters. One is to be ready. Do we have the stocks? Do we have the supplies? You know, do we have the positions? Are people trained to be able to respond? But then two is, are we prepared to actually respond? What do we need to do? And then are we prepared to come back to recovery? It's a continuum. And everything you do from the minute that impact happens, it's going to impact the rest of your life, the way you put your you know, programs back together. So truly, everything that's done in Haiti, right now we're just trying to meet the basic needs quickly, acutely. Just get them those, water, get them food. That's right. But, but even that food and water program, they're going to turn into short-term, medium-term, long-term programs. And eventually, they're going to be the foundation of Haiti's new you know, development, rebuilding of Haiti. And this is what you did in Gharapag, after the Liberation War, where there was nothing. Right. You went in, and you, as an expert, what did you do? Basically, when I went in, I was actually I, I was asked to come in and help them write a national health plan because we didn't. They didn't have anything. They had no plan of how to run their health care system, and health care meaning obviously not just medical care, but public health as well. And public health is like water, sanitation, all those other issues fall into public health. And so when I got there, I mean, they were sort of hand to mouth, hand to mouth, figuring out what to do. And I said, look, we need to stand back and assess. And that's the first thing. You need data. You need to understand what's really happening so that you can make the decisions. It's like saying, I want to get to, you know, X, but I don't have a map to get there. Well, you need to know, you know, slowly how to get where you need to go. And part of it is building data. So we actually did that. We conducted assessments. And that's what's happening, by the way, right now in Haiti. Why it takes a little bit longer, but it's the correct way to do it. <laughs>